today's video we're going to compare the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro with the m2 macbook pro 13 inch in terms of design and display so this design looks really good with this rounded corners and a completely flat top and bottom when compared to the m2 macbook pro which is basically reusing the same m1 macbook pro released in 2020 and in fact it's the same design since 2016 so therefore this design looks definitely outdated all right so in terms of weight the 14 inch is 220 gram heavier than the 13 inch comparing the thickness 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro laptop is uniformly thick whereas the 13 inch m2 macbook pro has this camphor design therefore it appears to be a lot thinner the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro is slightly thicker than the m2 macbook pro although we can see from this angle the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro is thicker it's not so thick as you see because of the tapering design on the m2 macbook pro it's technically thicker here and it's thinner at the edge therefore you feel that the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro is way more thicker all right so if i place a card on top of these two laptops you can see gap over here is way too much whereas the gap over here is very minimal therefore the whatever you see here is the actual thickness of this laptop and so this looks thick and chunky all right so let's compare the elevation when the laptop is placed on the surface so you can see on the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro you have a decent amount of elevation we can see the clearance whereas on the 13 inch m2 macbook pro you can see the elevation is not much and which results in less clearance and you can see from this angle this is a bit huge because the display is 14 inch and this is a 13 inch display also the apple logo on the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro is bit bigger when compared to the 13 inch m2 macbook pro all right so now looking at the rear view we can see the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro has this engraving of macbook pro whereas on the m2 macbook pro it's just plain and the usual writings which says designed by apple in california and assembled in china the part number and serial number and so on is printed over here on the top whereas on the m2 pro macbook pro 14 inch the print is at the bottom and we do have air vent on the either side of the macbook on the 14 inch on the 13 inch we don't have anything the only air vent present is over here so we do have air vent here as well on the 14 inch the 14 inch has sufficient cutouts for airflow and another thing is that the gap over here is way too much because this is the only place for airflow and they have kept it a bit wider on the 13 inch m2 macbook pro whereas on the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro the gap over here is thin because they do have cutouts here so the airflow is spread out uniformly all right now let's look at the ports on the left hand side the m2 macbook pro has two thunderbolt 3 ports whereas on the m2 pro macbook pro we have two thunderbolt 4 ports along with a magsafe 3 fast charging connector and of course we have the headphone jack with the support for high impedance headphones and then on the right hand side the m2 also gets the high impedance headphone however the 14 inch gets the hdmi port 2.0 it also gets an sd card slot and a thunderbolt 4 port and i mean uh, those extra ports on the m2 pro macbook pro are a huge deal you know they really come in handy especially the hdmi and the sd card slot now on the regular m2 macbook pro 13 inch i have to depend on this kind of dongle i have to carry this along you know which has all this sd card slot and uh, usb and so on and you can also see the cutout section here is smaller on the 13 inch compared to the 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro soon after we open the lid we can see the difference when it comes to the keyboard the m2 macbook pro still has the touch bar which some people hate some people like it i personally like the touch bar however on the m2 pro macbook pro the touch bar is totally removed and we get the regular function key buttons touch bar area the bit thinner however However, all the keys are equal in size the touch id is within this round circle however on the m2 macbook pro this complete thing is a touch id which in my experience it's easy to use this touch id compared to this because most of the time you know try to use the touch id i end up pressing outside the circle and sometimes it doesn't recognize and another important thing what you notice is the color the entire keyboard section is black 
Whereas you can see on the M2 MacBook Pro, color between the keys are of the same space gray color, which clearly shows that this entire part is a single piece with button cutouts where the buttons are placed from the inside. So here on the M2 Pro MacBook Pro keyboard, the whole thing is black. It's under the impression that this whole thing is one single part. So when compared it to a Windows laptop, you can see they follow the same pattern. The whole thing is a separate keyboard unit and there is a cutout here. So basically what they use to do is they place this whole unit inside this cutout so you can see how the laptop design is similar to a windows laptop although as i said earlier this whole thing is not a separate unit since the background is black it appears similar to the windows laptop when it comes to the keyboard so therefore in my opinion i personally don't like this black background it doesn't look unique for a macbook and you know if you compare it with the m2 macbook pro you can see how unique the keyboard looks so therefore i like this keyboard design so it depends on personal preference another important difference what you see here is the speaker area is a bit wider and here it is thinner there is indeed a huge difference you can see the 14 inch display is tall and huge whereas the 13 inch display is short and yes there is this notch it was a bit annoying when i saw it for the first time after using it on a daily basis i totally ignore this notch and don't really notice it I do appreciate the thinner bezels that come alongside the notch. You can see on the M2 MacBook Pro, the bezels are so thick, both on the top on on the sides comparing with the 14 inch MacBook. So we get a lot of screen real estate on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And we also have this rounded corner on the edges, whereas on the M2 MacBook Pro, it's a square corner. And on the M2 MacBook Pro, we have this MacBook Pro printed over here but we don't have it over here because we saw at the beginning that it's been engraved on the back side of this macbook as far as the display itself the m2 macbook pro uses a regular lcd panel with 500 nits of brightness the 14 inch has a mini led panel meaning it has different zones and it creates more brightness up to 1000 nits sustained brightness 1600 nits peak brightness 10,000 milli LEDs and excellent contrast ratio with 1 billion colors, which is pretty amazing. Let's watch a quick video to see the difference ourselves. We can see both the display are at full brightness, but on the 14 inch, you can see pure black. On the right hand side, the M2 MacBook Pro has this grayish because of the LCD display. Although the 14 inch display is fantastic, you can see there is this blooming effect. That's the little bit of glow around this area on a completely dark image. You don't see that on a LCD panel. So this is the only drawback of a mini LED display. But how often do you have this kind of situation? Overall, it's a lot better on the 14 inch. Apart from watching content, the mini LED is very useful. If you're going to be doing HDR photo or video editing, so that's a big bonus. But my favorite part about the 14 inch is the 120 hertz pro motion display which means the refresh rate is doubled compared to m2 which is stuck at 60 hertz all the time so everything is gonna look a lot smoother including if you're playing games at 120 hertz apple calls this 120 hertz as a pro motion display I hope this comparison video was informative. If you have any questions, please mention in the comment section below. As always, please hit the subscribe button and like my video. Thanks for watching. Peace.